I'd like to show some examples of graphing uh, on a number line with a specific domain. For example, if I say graph x not greater than or equal to 3, the first thing you have to do is you have to rewrite what you're going to be graphing. If it's not greater than or equal to 3, then it's less than 3. All right? There's an equal bar in this one. There's not one in this one. All right? So if that was x greater than, not greater than 3, then I would say less than or equal to 3. So be careful of that. Now, <clears throat> so x less than 3. So now, I put a number line. Let's identify a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 2. Arrows on both ends means that the graph goes on indefinitely in both directions. Now, when I want to show integers that are less than 3, would that include 3? Hope you said no. Okay. How about 2? How about 1? How about 0? How about negative 1? How about negative 2? Does this graph include negative 3? Yes, it does. It includes everything going in that negative direction. Okay. Does it include 3? No. How about 4? No. Now, if I asked you to graph this same expression based on the real numbers, the graph would look a little bit different. Again, I put 0, 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2. Now, <clears throat> x less than 3. For real numbers, you have to put an open circle on the 3, and then you shade everything that is less than 3. And the open circle means that you go as close as you can to 3, but not the number 3. So 2.999999 forever. And uh, everything less than that is on the graph. So, when you're graphing, it's important to know whether you're showing integers or real numbers. Real numbers include everything on the number line. All the radical numbers, the decimal numbers, the funny-looking fractions. Whereas integers are just solid numbers and nothing in between. So, pay attention to what type of graph you're doing and, um, and what the problem is asking you to graph. I'm going to do another example. I'll erase this for a second.